week of Kidopolis. I'm Miss Jessie. We are in the month of July. Believe it or not, we are halfway through this year, and this is our second week in the month of July, but like our sixth or seventh week, I'm not sure, can't remember how many weeks there were in June, of this lesson that we're doing. Focus. Focus. Take a closer look. So, what are we taking a closer look at? Hmm, how about our faith? Okay, faith. Trusting, I always mix up this sentence. <laughs> Trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So, let's focus on what we can see and that'll help us trust in what we can't see. Focus. This week in particular, we are going to talk about something that is so important. I'm gonna bring it all back to this later of how you, you, yes, you, my friend watching right now, you, Y-O-U, can help others know Jesus. Yes, you can. You can and you should. Um, so, since we are on that note, I want you to do a little activity with me. You're gonna get a plain piece of paper. It doesn't have to be plain, it can be um, the back of an envelope, it can be a lined piece of paper, it really can be anything. Just a piece of paper, okay? And a marker. Honestly, I wish I had something other than a black marker. This is what I could find. And what I want you to do is start naming people in your life. So, I'll do Jacob, my husband. And every name I say, I'm gonna put a dot on my paper. And Esme, my oldest daughter. Phoebe, my second daughter. Heidi, my youngest. My mom, my dad, my grandma Vi, my grandpa Paul, my aunt Kelly, my cousin Brittany, my cousin Taylor, my cousin Zachary, my cousin Brian, my cousin Robbie, my cousin Polly, my cousin Jackie, my cousin Michelle, my best, best friend Shara, her husband Zach, my other best friend Sarah and her kids, Kenzie and Addison. My other other best friend, Artesia, and her kids. Oh, she has so many. She has Maddie, Sophie, Clara, Benedict, Kateri, Gemma, and William. Oh, and don't forget her husband, Matt. What, um, who am I missing? Well, you know, there's Pastor Jeff and his wife, Jen, and their kids. There's Kate and Charlie. And I could honestly just keep going all day. And so could you. It's actually kind of fun to think about all the people that you know in your life. But let's look at these dots and think about how much longer I could have gone. Because I didn't say you. I didn't say your name, did I? Well, unless you're Charlie, who's probably editing this. Hi, Charlie. Thanks again. Um, but there's so many dots and there could be so many more. And each of these dots, Jesus knows the name of. Not these dots, but the people that they represent. Jesus, God, knows the name of them and he cares about them, and he loves them, and he wants their life to be amazing, and he wants to be close to them. And so many more people, right? God knows everybody. He knows their name, and he knows their story, and he knows you. And he wants all of these dots to pray for all these other dots and to get to know God um, a little bit better. So if it helps you, which it might help me, you can take your really cool sheet of dots or your envelope or whatever you drew it on, and go ahead and maybe tape it in your bathroom. So when you're brushing your teeth, maybe you can pray for all of these dots. The people, not the dots. You know what I mean. Or in your bed, or um, next to your bed. So maybe you can pray for all these people when you go to bed or when you wake up. Maybe put it on the fridge. So when you're about to go get some orange juice or an apple. Do you like cold apples? I like my apples cold. Um, cheese stick, we'll say. You can pray for all of them. Let me know how it goes, and I'm gonna put a few more because I forgot about you and your parents. Um, I think I forgot about, did I remember? Uh, here, we'll do Jacob's mom and dad too. So I'll just keep thinking of dots. I'll see you in a few minutes. Joe, Aunt Diane, Aunt Sandy, Aunt Elaine, Uncle Luke. Jackie's husband, Mike. Oh, okay. I got a lot of dots and I can just keep going. But we're gonna do something for me that's even harder than counting these dots. Because I can count, I'm okay at it. 
we're going to talk about the Greek language. I have some words here. How many do I have? Five. Um, and we're going to go over some of these Greek words. Um, just for fun. We'll see how it goes. My favorite one, I say this word uh, maybe once a day. Um, maybe you say it. I don't know. Have you ever heard this word? Opa! So the, up here is what we, what I say, what we say, opa. I don't know if you've ever been to a Greek restaurant, but there's something that you can get called sag, saganaki, saganaki, I'm not sure what it's, how to say, pronounce it exactly. But that's because I know it as flaming cheese. Literally flaming cheese. The waitress brings this plate, platter to your table and she like squirts a oil or something on it. And it just bursts into literal flames, you guys. And they serve it with pita bread, and it's amazing. But when it bursts into flames, the waitress, she, if she doesn't say this, I, I, she doesn't get a tip. I'm just kidding, that's not true. But she says, opa! And what it means, it can mean so many things. It's like, um, it, it's uh, something that people use to express like emotion or shock or surprise. So it can be, yay! Or, oh no! Or, woohoo! Or, ah! So, opa! And in case you're wondering, these Greek letters down here, I did my best. I'm not a Greek pro. Um, it's omega, p, or pi. We know it as pi, but they, they say p apparently. Apparently. And alpha. Opa! That was fun, right? All right, here's another fun Greek word. This is a good one. Are you ready? Euro. Euro. Um, it's not pronounced gyro, like my mom says. Some people will say gyro. My boss calls them heroes, which is probably kind of close. Um, but it's this Greek word down here. And in case you're wondering what the letters are, they're gamma, gamma, upsilon, rho, omicron, and then sigma. And that comes from the Greek word um, that means circle or to turn. Because a gyro is a type of meat that you cook and it spins like this, and then they shave it off, and oh, it's so good. If you haven't had a gyro before, you are missing out. Get it with feta, Mwah. All right, gyro. Um, it's actually, if you were to pronounce it this way down here, the Greek way, is gyros, gyros. And that might mean more than one, but I'm not sure because I'm not a pro. Next, okay, lamb. Lamb. Down here, this is alpha, mu, nu, omicron, sigma. And this lamb is a little bit different, and this is referring to like a sacrificial lamb. So actually, you know, in um, the Bible, we learned about a lot of sacrifices that people made in order to get clean with God. So I, this lamb kind of refers to that. Jeff might want to fact check me on that. We'll see. Um, and it's pronounced amnos or amnos. I'm not sure. That's lamb, and uh, I just did lamb because gyro meat is part lamb meat. <laughs> okay, the next two, here we go. Well, we'll do one at a time. Phone, oh my gosh, did you know this was a Greek word? How often do you say the word phone? Phone, it comes from the Greek word. If you take that E away, like that, beep. I don't know if it's still phone or if it's fawn, but um, that word, bloop, that, Phi, Omega, Nu, Eta. That means sound. So that's why you're going to see this P H O N. Let's think about it microphone, telephone, saxophone, symphony. I know it doesn't sound like phone, but it's in there. Trust me. Um, there's a xylophone. What about the word phonics? Phonics, where that's all about learning how letters sound um, to help you read, right? That's cool. Also, this PH. Here's a funny story. Our daughter Phoebe, her name starts with a PH. That's a Greek sound. Um, and she knows that her name starts with F. -f, -f. So she thinks a lot of words that start with an F start with PH. She once spelled favorite with a PH at the beginning. That's just a funny story. I think it's funny. You might not think it's funny. All right. Lastly, music. Music. So this is mu, omicron, upsilon, sigma, iota, kappa, eta. OK, 
okay? And it's, I don't think I'm gonna say it right. Bear with me. M music, Mosiki, Mousiki, I don't know. M-O-U-S-I-K-E. And this word, music, comes from, have you ever heard of the muses? Um, they're the people, uh, I don't know, they inspire people to make art or maybe they make art themselves. Once again, not a pro. But it comes from that, from the art from the muses. Music, so cool. So many Greek words and actually, there's so many Greek words like in our regular language that we use without even realizing they come from Greek. But one of the cool things is there's a lot of part of our Bibles um, were originally written in some form of Greek and um, a lot of the Bible takes place in Greece. So it was really cool to learn a little bit about the Greek language and um, maybe it'll help us study our Bible. Especially considering the story that we're going to do today, it is, let me check my notes, Acts chapter 17 verses 16 through 34. I'm going to refresh real quick and I'll come right back to you, okay? So far, we've talked a lot about Paul in the book of Acts. It's a lot about his life and um, leads up to some of the letters that he wrote, like the book of uh, Thessalonians and Romans and things like that. Um, so, so far, if you've been paying attention, there's three main things I want you to know about Paul that I hope you know already. One, his name used to be Saul, and when he was Saul, he was scary. Two, when he became Paul, he preached the word of God and the good news of Jesus everywhere he went, like it was going out of style. And number three, it kind of was already out of style to preach about Jesus. A lot of people didn't like it, and a lot of people had some bad things to say. Those were the three main things I want you to know so far about Paul. Okay, so... Like I said, everywhere he went, he preached about Jesus. And pretty much everywhere he went, there were pe religious leaders of the time who were like, no bueno, dude. Adios, muchacho. So they forced him out of Thessalonica, right? They're like, goodbye. And they took him to a city called, or a place, maybe a region, not sure, called Berea. Berea? B-E-R-E-A. Like I said, not very good at Greek because this is in Greece, okay? And then after that, they chased him out of there. And um, the, follower, the followers, the people who were like, yay, Paul, they helped him get on a boat to go to Athens. And in Athens is where the cool part of our story is gonna take place, okay? When Paul got to Athens, he saw all kinds of statues, okay? So many statues in Greece. They worship all kinds of gods, not just one, but many, so many. Let's see, Doo -doo -doo -doo. let's put this one here. You stay up. Okay, so many, right? And if you remember, you said there is one true God, one God, and there is one Jesus who died on the cross for our sins and who rose back up um, to prove basically that this entire Bible is what it says it is, okay? But Paul, he was looking around and he see all these statues and he's realizing in Greece and in Athens, he's gonna have a hard time. So he's looking around, looking around and he sees one, um, an altar. Let's say they're not statues, let's say they're all altars. I'm not sure exactly what it looked like. Um, but one of the altars had the words to an unknown God written on them. And here's the thing. Paul realized that this might help him talk to the people in Athens. So this is Acts chapter 17, verse 20 through, 22 through 25. Um, he said, men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walk around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, he probably didn't do that. I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Now, what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. So basically he's like, you say it's unknown, guess what? Great news, good news, I know who it is. 
Okay. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Because remember these altars? They're bringing stuff to all of the gods who are there. Like, oh, maybe this guy needs some lamb. Maybe this guy needs some oil, this God. Maybe this God over here wants some flowers. God doesn't need that. This God who created the heaven and the earth does not need that. Um, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. Okay? So, let me see if it's in here. Do -do -do. Oh, okay. It's, um, I'll just keep reading. Okay, sorry. And everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. Um, I think that means everybody is where they need to be to do what they need to do to get close to God. God did this so that men... <laughs> Hi. It tells you right in the next sentence. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring, or we are his children. So all of these, Paul was like, nope, 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 The unknown God. We are his children. And you're super cute and everything, but God does not need us to leave you flowers or lamb or oil or anything. So I'm just going to at you nicely so <clears throat> Paul was able to get through to them he looked around he saw what he was working with he used the words of his their own poets we have kids downstairs hanging out it's fun. The, he used the words of their own poets and he got the people of Athens to become believers how cool is that so that brings me back to let's go let's go it through it okay faith Trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So what did Paul see? He saw an altar that had an unknown God and words. We are his offspring. We are his children on it. And he was able to use it and help the people who saw this altar trust in what they couldn't see, what they didn't know, their unknown God. Focus. Take a closer look. Man, if I were Paul and I saw all these statues and altars floating around I would think oh, I have my work cut out for me how am I gonna get rid of all of these and help them understand that there is one true God okay don't worry cuz that's he focused and he took a closer look he figured out what he needed to do and lastly you can help others know Jesus there is a way just like it says like we're here where is it <clears throat> Where was the thing? I lost it. I think it's 26. Da, da, da. God did this. This is um, in uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 27. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. He is not far from each one of us. We might be the person that is not far from another person to get them to know Jesus. Right? So, speaking of... You can help others know Jesus. Do you know what time it is? It is not peanut butter jelly time. It is not peanut butter jelly time. It is time for our memory verse. This is why I love memory verses. We can help others know Jesus. Because just like Paul looked around him and he figured out the words that would help him get through to the people of Athens, you might have a memory verse floating around there somewhere, a verse from the Bible that helps an, a person get to know God, helps them get to know Jesus. You never know which verse is going to apply to that person's life and when. So just memorize as much as you can. Miss Jessie is here to support you. I have treats. If you memorize it, send it to me. So last week, I told you our versity verse. It is God's grace have saved you because of your faith in Christ. I'm sorry, I should hold it up. Because of your, I'm not holding it. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. 
Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is God's gift. That is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. So JV, we're going to do the same thing we did last month, junior versities. We are going to do just a one sentence from this verse because this is such a great thing for you to remember, okay? Your verse. I have no rhythm at all, like none. Um, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. I mean, if you memorize that, the other part kind of logics itself out. But God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Now, what is JV? What are my junior versities? These are people who look at these one, two, three, four and a half lines, and they're like, woo, doggy. That's a lot of memory verse. So let's say that, you know, two verses are a perfect amount for you. You are in my JV. You still get the same treats. So if you feel good doing two verses, perfect. I am here for that. I'm here, I support you. I drop that treat off at your house. Send me a video, call me up however you need, okay? Now my verses, listen, you know who you are. If this first sentence is way too easy for you, you move on to the whole kit and caboodle, this whole thing, four and a half lines. You got it, I believe in you. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, this is from the NI, little RV, not the NIV. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Think of how important that is for somebody who is struggling, maybe. Maybe they're a very faithful person in God. Maybe they're they're like, man, I don't understand. I go to church every week. I read my Bible. I try to be a good person. I'm nice. I help old ladies cross the street. I pull kittens out of trees. And I'm having a hard time because I feel like I'm not close to God. Or maybe I feel like... Uh, God isn't giving me what I need in my life. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter how many old ladies you help cross the street. It's not what you do. It's God's gift. And what it is is your faith in Christ. And you continue to have that faith in Christ, you're going to get that grace. Okay? So please send me your memory verses. I love to see them. They literally, you have no idea. They literally make my day. I'll send you a video back of me being so excited. Jacob usually is excited too. It'll be both of us. We'll be like, ah! I think I had too much caffeine today. Okay, so it is a mess here. Oh, okay, I think we're all done with papers. We're gonna go on to prayer. <laughs> if you have any prayers that you wanna send my way, please do so, I love hearing from you, not just memory verses. And don't think, oh no, I didn't do my memory verse. I really wanna tell Miss Jessie about a prayer, but I think she'll be upset if I didn't do my memory verse, so how can I bring a prayer to her? Bro, don't worry about that. I'm here for you, you don't, you bring me your prayer requests, you bring me your praise report, something cool that happened, um, any questions that you might have, even if you just want to be like, hey, Miss Jessie, how's it going? Let's do it. Let's talk. Um, so for now, I'm going to pray. I'll remind you to do your verses, your memory verse. I'll remind you to send me your prayer requests. Tape up your dot sheet. Practice your Greek. Whew, it's a busy week this week, but I believe in you. Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for all the languages around the world so that um, so many people can get to know you in their own language um, in a way that makes sense to them. Thank you for the people who study the languages so that the different languages can communicate with one another. Thank you for Paul. Oh, and all the hard work that he did. I am amazed by his life and his story. And I thank you so much and I praise you so much for all that he did. Um, I hope to be a good teacher like Paul. I pray that you help me do that um, so that I can be a great teacher to my kiddos here at Kidopolis and at home. Um, and I pray that my friends in Kidopolis are having a great summer. I pray that I get to see them very soon. And um, I just pray that you bless their lives uh, so that they feel so very close to you. Love you, God. Pray this in your son's name. Okay, so all that homework we have to do, you don't have to. Be cool if you did. But one more thing. Are you ready? Are you ready? Like, brace yourself. Buckle up. Okay. I guess that's... Am I driving? Yeah.
Now I'm driving. Okay. So, not today. Like, settle down. Not today. But next Sunday. We are going to have Sundays. No, we're not going to pack a bunch of Sundays, like a bunch of Kidopolis lessons into one day. Ice cream Sundays! We're going to have ice cream Sundays. You and your family and your friends, invite your next door neighbor. Invite your next door neighbor, your across the street neighbor, call your grandma up. Be like, hey, my church, Miss Jessie, she's going to have ice cream Sundays for us at noon. Drive up in your car with your family. There's going to be information on the LCC website. But we're going to have an order form for what you want on your ice cream sundae. Let me know if it's something crazy ahead of time. Like, if you want pickles on your sundae, I mean, that's not something I would think people would want on their sundae, so I might not bring it. Unless you tell me ahead of time. Put your order down. Me and my friends um, will make it for you, and we'll bring it out to your car. The grown-ups got to do this with coffee, and I said, listen, guys, I think my kiddos want some ice cream. It's summer. It's hot. And who doesn't want ice cream? Even if this was January, I think it's a great idea. So I hope to see you then. And if you have your memory verse ready then, let's do it, okay? Even though, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you a treat later in the week so we can space the treats out, okay? All right. I miss you guys. I hope you're having a great summer. I love you. Mwah. Bye. So are those cards for the ancient or modern language? I have no idea. It's all Greek to me.